Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to look at the Bodnik Hunter Stick, which is this bow. Six inches long, brace size seven and a quarter, European. Now it says it has a 30 year warranty, but there's, there's something in there which says six months for twisted limbs. So look, you'd have to read that and sort of understand it. I didn't really understand it. So it might be simple, but I don't know. It says 30 years for this and that, and which is amazing for a, like a handmade bow. But then it says for six months for twisting a limb. So, I, so I'm guessing that in the first six months, if the limbs don't twist, then, then that's it as far as twisting, but the other stuff's covered. That's what I. That's the way I read it. Anyway, big warranty. So this is a European built longbow, and I'm going to sort of show you the quality of it. Um, look, the Bodnik bows look lovely, and they've got different price points. They've got expensive price points, and and they've got cheap price points. And when I say cheap, not Chinese cheap, although they may be Chinese, and I'm not taking anything away from Bodnik from saying that. Um, but they're kind of in that price point, a little bit more expensive, but they look a little bit nicer, I'm going to say. Um, but they may be Chinese, I don't know. Um, and they're probably going to get all upset with me for suggesting it's Chinese, but that's the way life is. Um, it's just they've got such a price gap between their top line bows, like $2,000, and their bottom, bottom bow would be... I don't know three four hundred dollars um, now the thing with bod neck bows when you order them you have the choice of ordering the bow or in the bow with a string and a rest the string and the rest is about an extra I'm gonna say ten dollars roughly um, and I ordered a whole bunch of bows without the string and the rest because it's a tick box on the order and I didn't tick it because you got to tick it every time you order and the website takes well, it took me about three hours to do my order. So, and it was just like, because you wait, you click, you wait, you click, you wait, you click. Anyway, it took me a long, long time yesterday to do the order. Now, a bit about it. So the outside of the glass, it's a bit of a dull finish and it's not smooth, if that makes sense. Um, sometimes they have a high gloss. This is like a matte finish, a satin finish. And it's not smooth. It's a kind of a rough finish. It's nice. Um, the laminations look beautiful. Um, now, when people look at traditional bows, they look at you know the possibility of defects, and they look in the edges like here. I think that's just the. Um, I think that's just the wood. Um, but I'm sure I can find a defect. I'm sure I can find a defect. It's almost impossible to not find a defect defect on a custom made bow. I hear this little scratch, but like you can, like if you're worried about something like that, just hit it with a bit of wet and dry. Um, the finest wet and dry there is. Um, but look, normally these bows are beautiful. Like just on the edge there, there's a little But it look it looks it looks fantastic and for me it's it's a fantastic looking bow. We're gonna fit a 60 inch string to it, we're gonna fit a little bit of leather here to it because when you shoot these bows you don't want to shoot it straight off the wood because when the arrow runs along it it's gonna rub. So put a little bit of uh, leather and some felt here when you shoot the bow. So we're gonna shoot it and see how it feels to shoot. Okay, so I was looking through my shop for what I'm gonna stick on it, and this was a set that came up. It fitted pretty close on the riser, so like that, and that's also not too bad. I think I'll just give it a little bit of a trim, and they're in business. Now, when you stick your hair on the bow, make sure the hair's in the direction where the arrow's going to run, not against the arrow, because otherwise the hair's going to just rip up all the time. Um, so I'm just going to trim this, stick them on, fit the string, and then we're ready. To Okay, so I'm about to fit a string to the bow. Now, a lot of people are like all over strings as far as like they have an opinion this way or that way. I don't have an opinion this way or that way. Okay, so I'm going to give you my view. You can take it with what you want. It's just the way. A lot of people will fit Flemish twist strings. 
okay? They fit it because it's traditional. Some people will say the bow's quieter with a Flemish twist with a Flemish twist versus a normal string. Look, I don't know. The thing with Flemish twist, the ends are not served, so it's raw material. It's raw Dacron or raw fast flight on the limb tips here. So if you've got a, like a rough edge or something, you've got a high chance that, that Flemish twist string could damage, could damage, the bow will damage the string. So it's more than common with a Flemish twist string that you will see like wear marks around the limb tips. Now, with a normal string, and I'm just grabbing this string out, this is one we made. I'm not pushing my strings by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you've got different types of ends serving. So if it's a cheap string with serving, that probably got like cheap serving around the ends. Now that will wear. That will wear probably almost as fast as the Flemish twist string will wear. Um, now there'll be people with Flemish twist strings who go, I've had my string on my bow for a hundred years, it's never worn. Absolutely, because it's perfectly smooth, there's no rough spots and the string's all fine. Depends on the speed, depends on lots of stuff. Now if you have a string made with better string material and loop ends, like I use, um, I'm going to say I use Fast Flight, I use a Halo for my servings, like they last for years literally years it's what you use on the compound bow it is more expensive it's about forty dollars forty fifty dollars a reel for the serving now cheap strings use about five dollar a reel servings so five dollars versus fifty big difference in cost um so you've just got to go look i prefer to use strings with better quality serving because that way i just don't it's not going to break i don't want things breaking now the material on this bow I haven't read the instructions and that's probably me. Look, a lot of people will fit Dacron. Dacron strings are more spongy, they give, they absorb more. Um, they're more stretchy. Now, some people want more speed, so they'll shoot for fast flight. Fast flights are kind of a, it's a bit like Dacron but not as much stretch. And then you've got other string materials with even less stretch than fast flight, like 8125. Now on this bow, I'm going to suggest that probably, probably, like a string like 8125 is okay. I checked the manufacturer's specs. But I'm going to start off with a Dacron string, um, just because I don't want to take a risk and I just want to shoot. Right, I don't want to, I don't want to rip the limb tips off it and go, oh, I shouldn't have done that, it's a thousand dollar bow, that's a bugger. Um, so I'm just going to go for a Dacron string with better serving around the end so I don't rip the end loops off. Um, again, I'm going to say this is a better quality bow so the chances of the serving splitting is probably negligible, right? But on a cheaper bow, let's say you buy a $150 bow, a $200 bow, a $300 bow, I'm going to guess it's probably a... Uh, 50% chance a Flemish twist string or a string with cheaper serving around the ends will wear very quickly. So it depends how much you sh how much you shoot. So I'm going to say, bang for the buck, you're better to have a string with the better quality serving around the ends. So I learned that very quick shooting recurve that the cheap strings had cheap serving around the ends and I'd go through them in a month to two months where if I made the string up with halo serving, um, they lasted forever. So anyway, so we're gonna fit this string. And I'm gonna guess it's made with the. Okay, so one thing I like about a custom made string is a, as opposed to a cheap string. So you see here the end, it's not like not too big. Some of the cheap strings you get, um, they have a big loop end here, it's more likely to slide down the, down the end. Um, so this is definitely halo serving, it's nice and rigid. Um, so that will last a long time. Um, and the other end, like the, the, the gap, the gap, the loop end is about right. So I'm pretty happy with that. So, so one of the things that is really important with traditional archery is the glove. So I left my gear at home. It's New Year's Day, early in the morning, seven o'clock. And my missus is asleep, so I headed out early. Because I, I get buggered in the afternoon. Like, I am wiped out. By about 5 o'clock, I am just... 
I was asleep. I was in bed at about seven o'clock, eight o'clock New Year's Eve. Um, asleep by about eight thirty. So pretty good in the morning. Like I'm a little bit shaky, bad headache, but um, anyway. Right. So the important thing with a traditional recurve is the arrows. It's got to bend around the bow. If it if it's too stiff, it's going to rub all the way through. If it's too weak, it's going to wrap around here. So generally the way, generally the way, if the arrow is too weak, it's going to shoot to that side because it's going to wrap around that side to the right. Um, so it's going to shoot to the right if it's too weak. And if it's too stiff, it's going to shoot to the left. You can adjust the spine of the arrow by changing point weight. Heavier points will soften the spine. Lighter points will stiffen the spine. But just go shoot. I mean, just get started. Getting the spine right is hard. I just, and I stress this all the time because people come in like, I need the right spine arrow. It's really, really hard, really hard to get the right spine arrow. It doesn't matter if, like, if it suits me because you might draw back the bow different than me. It's like you might have a 50 pound bow, but draw it back at 24 inches. So you're not getting 50 pounds. It's, it's, it's like, it's really hard. Recurves are really hard. Normally to get the spine correct, traditional is even harder. So it's a bit of trial and error. And I'm going to say traditional is really hard to shoot. Like really hard. It's, it's crazy stuff. And if you're in doubt, try some different arrows. So like this is a 50 pound bow. Um, now the other thing I like about having a string made is the knocking knocks should be perfect on the string. And that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So, um, and you know, you use better quality serving here. If you use a cheaper string, this will be cheaper here. So it'll wear out quicker. Um, this is a 50 pound bow. Look, as a ballpark, probably around 500 spine arrows. Um, so I shoot a 50 pound, well I shoot over, over a 50 pound recurve uh, for target archery and I'm shooting 500 spined arrows. Okay, so but 500 is a good starting point for 50 pounds. Um, ask people and you know, like what do you shoot? And I mean, there are obviously arrow charts. I generally find the Eastern arrow charts a little bit stiff. Um, some arrow charts are spot on, so just you know, trial and error with everything. So let's first off see how the yeah with a glove. This is a new glove. New gloves are not the best. You know, you've got to wear them in. So let's just try the draw. So it starts off quite solid, building, building, building. There. You can take the hat off. Now, when I shoot bare bow, I draw it back to the corner of my mouth. Um, different people shoot differently. Some people gap shoot. Now, I'm going to say this is a long bow. Now, under the World Archery Rules or Archery Australia Rules, this is not classed as a long bow. It's classed as a recurve, which is stupid. I cannot underestimate the stupidity, but that's okay, whoever makes the rules. This is clearly a long bow. There's no... There's no plunger button holes, there's no side holes, it's a 60 inch bow. If the bow is 64 inches or 66 inches, I think Archery Australia or World Archery classifies the long bow. This is 60 inches. Stupid rule. I mean seriously, those people need to have a look at their... I'm going to say that because, you know, you, you're trying to group people with the similar equipment in similar groups. Recurve is clearly recurve, and that's Olympic recurves with fancy limbs, plunger buttons, fancy arrow rests. That's a recurve. Cool, we understand what that is. The other stuff's a longbow. This is a longbow. There is no advantage over shooting 60 inches versus 66 inches. If you rock up to a tournament with one of these, a 60 inch bow, and guys shooting 66, you're going to go, oh, if he's got a 60 inch bow, he's going to win. It's not the way it is. The people who are going to shoot a 60 inch bow are more likely to be hunters who want a more compact bow, who don't want a bow getting stuck in the you know, woods. But this is clearly a, clearly a long bow. There's no part of it touching. There used to be some, peop some rules where the string couldn't touch. That was a stupid rule as well. These people who come up with stupid rules does nothing to help the sport of archery. Stupid rules do nothing. It should be 
the rules should be if we're getting more people into this archery that's a good thing anything to get people out of archery not a good thing that should be that simple but anyway <coughs> so now when I shoot look different people shoot differently and I'm probably not a person to listen to on traditional bows I will tilt it a little bit um, to the side I don't have a sight so it doesn't matter if I tilt the bow I'm just looking down the arrow um, so I, I'll tilt the bow a little bit if you're shooting with the side if you tilt the bow then you're changing the sight but if you're not shooting with a if you're not shooting with a sight then it doesn't matter if you tilt the bow okay so I tilt the bow a little bit I come back I will have this hopefully touch the corner of my mouth and I'll shoot and we'll see where it goes So, it's quite solid, quite solid, and by the time I get back here, look, it feels, it feels harder than my 50, 56 pound red curb. feels harder, but it's a pretty solid draw. Um, it's comfortable, but it's, I can say it doesn't feel like it's stacking, but it feels solid all the way through. I'm going to guess this is going to be fairly fast to shoot. Of course, I didn't bring a chronograph because it's New Year's and I didn't think of that. I was like, oh, let's go to, let's go to work while everyone's sleeping. And um, let's check out this bow. <laughs> right, there's a little bit of um, recall forward little bit but it's not bad and you'd expect that because it's very lightweight bow the heavier the bow the less vibration you'll feel forward so if you've got a bone anchor you'll feel you'll feel nothing which is why a lot of the compound bows are very heavy today this bow is extremely quiet extremely quiet um it's um it's very good now that was a 500, that was a 500 spined arrow. This is an 800 spined arrow, and people say, "Well, you shouldn't shoot it." Look, I shot 800 spine when I was shooting about 32 pounds, 30 how, um, 36 pounds. I think I shot 800 spine. So yeah, this this should shoot to that side. But again, it gets back to how well I'm shooting, and and this is not my form of archery, right? So I'm gonna make all the excuses. But the bow, I like the grip. The grip feels nice. The draw feels nice. It's very quiet. It's a very comfortable bow to shoot. Okay, so where would I rate this bow? The Hunter Stick in long bows. Now some of my favorite long bows are the Predator. I love the Predator long bow. Love that bow. No longer made. Um, the um, Damon Howard Savannah. I own one of those bows. Amazing long bow. I rate those bows. Um, they are two of my favorite long bows. This is clearly probably going to say faster because it's a little bit shorter. 60 inches. So it's going to be more set up for hunting. This is going to be more of a hunting bow. Someone who shoots, you know, 20, 30, 40 meters. Um, where the other bows, which come in 66, 68 inches, are probably going to be a little bit more comfortable on your shoulders. Um, but I like the bow. I think it's a quality product. This is 70. 700 spined arrow um, and if you're shooting the long bow you've got to shoot feathers I'm not saying that because you you know because I want to push feathers and traditional you need feathers because otherwise this is gonna it's gonna clear here um, you may get away with veins but I doubt it because you'd have to have perfect you'd have to have perfect tune when you shoot a recurve bow, you've got a plunger button, and if the rise is cut out, it's much easier to tune using the plunger button, the tension, the left and right. With this, you've got no tuning, so it's very, very hard to get the bow to shoot. Which is when I when I see people shoot amazing with like these sorts of bows, it's like 
It's just magic. It's like, you might as well be a magician because I don't even understand it. Look, I love the bow. A little bit of hand shock at the end, but extremely quiet. Um, how does it rate against the, the Predator and their Savannah? Look, I think... I don't know, it just might be emotional connection. I think I prefer the other two longbows. However, for a hunting longbow or a hunting traditional bow, this I would probably put above those two bows. Um, because I, I feel it's faster, I feel it's more... quick faster quick it just feels more feels more hunting um, feels quiet now recurve versus longbow hunting bows recurve bows are generally a little bit quicker but a little bit more noisier so this bow is definitely quieter if you put some puffs on that little bit of noise you hear will go so it's always like, should I buy a recurve or should I buy a longbow for hunting for traditional archery? Most people will buy recurve. However, don't discard like a bow like this, 60 inches, because I think this, it's quieter and a lot of people want quiet. Um, and this is definitely quieter. And I don't think it's going to be that much slower than a hunting recurve. I don't think there'll be anything in it at all because this is pretty quick. Anyway, I think it's a very, very good bow. I think the build quality is really good. Look, 30-year warranty, I think it's just crazy. I don't think they're doing themselves or dealers any favors with a 30-year warranty. I'm happy with two years. Um, I think the six months is on the twisting of the limbs, so just check that. Look, twisting limbs, for me, I sell thousands of recurves, thousands of recurves, and I've sold lots thousands of recurves a year I've been selling archery gear for 30 for over 30 years so I've sold thousands and thousands of them even with the expensive recurves the, the really big dollar ones you still get twisting on limbs and all they do is they twist in the opposite direction and then they go back and shoot again so look I think that's fair enough um, that wouldn't deter me from buying this bow I think it's I think it's very well built I think it's a beautiful bit of thing price point um so just talk price points 466 euro dollars um so euro dollars now is in par with us dollars so 466 um in australian dollars it's 800 dollars um the savannah and the predator were more expensive longbows so there are about a thousand um a bit over a thousand eleven hundred um so this is significantly cheaper it prices itself a little bit more expensive than the cheap longbows. A little bit more expensive. And I'm talking about the Bear Montana. But I think this bow is better than the Bear Montana. It's a better, it's a better bow than the Bear Montana. So I think price point, Bearpaw, have, Bearpaw, which is the maker of this bow, have priced the bow in the niche that is just perfect. It's like it's a high-end product, but not crazy high-end. Um, and Bodnik, Bearpaw do have a crazy top-end $2,000 bow. Um, but this is, I think this, the Hunter Stick will be perfect for a person who's looking for a quality hunting recurve. Who's like, look, yeah, I want to give this a go. It's nice, lightweight. It's quiet. I want to see if I can shoot this thing. I want to see if I can shoot a animal at 20 meters. This is the bow to do it with. I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Enjoy your new year and all the best for 2023. Thanks for watching. Bye.